As the U.S. celebrates its gold medal in figure skating, human rights abuses may be happening just up the street. A Chinese detention center is just a short drive away from where U.S. figure skater Nathan Chin won gold. The Falun Dafa Information Center recently released a map showing locations of Beijing's detention centers. We went through the whole Beijing area. We mapped out the main Olympic venues. We mapped out the prison and the detention centers so that people could see with their own eyes just how close these two things were in modern China. One of those facilities in Beijing is the Chaoyang Detention Center. It's around a 10-minute drive from the figure skating venue Capital Indoor Stadium. Horrific means of torture have happened inside the center. That's according to first-hand statements given to U.S.-based Falun Gong information website Minghui.org. Falun Gong practitioner Ms. Xiao Feng Wen was previously detained there. When she went on a hunger strike, police would force feed her, not to rescue her, but as a torture method. Police would force her mouth open using pliers. Her teeth became loose afterward. On one occasion, police inserted a tube through her nose and into her stomach to force feed her. She says they pulled the tube back and forth to cause more pain. Another practitioner told Minghui.org about her experience. She recounted, They started to force feed me with the highly concentrated salt water. The tube was not removed after the force feeding was over, so I felt the extreme pain every time I breathed, and my eyes were full of tears. The suffering was beyond description. Other accounts of torture describe police pouring cold water onto detainees in freezing temperatures. They would then let the water slowly turn into ice on their bodies. This regime is doing horrific things to prisoners of conscience right in the middle of, their main, of, of one of their main cities, right in the middle of the Olympics. and During the Olympics, Beijing heightens security around the venues and brings in more security personnel. Brody says Beijing has been simultaneously leveraging that extra security to crack down on dissidents. He adds that this has been the case since the 2008 Games. That's how popular Chinese singer and Falun Gong practitioner Yu Zhou and his wife Xuna were arrested during that year's Summer Olympics. They were at a security, uh, Olympic-related security checkpoint, and the police officer simply found a Falun Gong book in their bag. That was it, and that was enough to take them both into custody. Eleven days later, Shina's husband died days later in prison. She was released three years later. But leading up to this year's Winter Olympics, a Beijing court sentenced Xu another eight years in prison. The CCP is so brazen and so audacious with suppressing prison. You know putting prisoners of conscience into prison, they'll do it wide open, they'll do it leading up to the Olympics, knowing it's going to get the full attention, almost as if they're sort of displaying that this is how they're going to treat Falun Gong and no one can do anything about it. And so, so then why do we hear little mention of Falun Gong from politicians and the media? Brody says a conflict of interest may be at play. You know, the CCP exerts a tremendous amount of political and economic pressure. And I think there are those who just feel that it's too much of a sacrifice of their own position, their own economic welfare, or the welfare of their, you know, their, their area. Brody says that the few who are not influenced by the CCP have been clear about this clampdown for years, that what's happening to Falun Gong in China is genocide. Xina was far from the only one arrested leading up to the Olympics. In January 2022, at least 132 Falun Gong practitioners have been convicted by the regime due to their beliefs. This is according to statistics from Falun Gong information website Minghui.org. Close to two dozen of those convicted are 60 to 90 years old. Most were given three to four-year sentences.